welcome to episode 35 of LMR Live, coming to you from Nutt Auditorium on the campus at the University of Mississippi. The Living Music Resource brings you edutainment, and we've got a great show for you today, our unique and innovative way of engaging. The end of that opening clip, you got to have a little treat. You got to enjoy a little bit of the music that happened last night at our club Sarah Fest concert in our building. It was this merge of Kelly Hogan, Jenny Conley, and our very own students. It was a blast. We'll share more with you later. So this week, we have had in residency the Kelly Hogan and the Jenny Conley. They have been leading classes and lectures and coaching and engaging and just up for almost anything. Thus, they're doing today. Oh um, so how are these events possible? They are possible because we work with an incredible partner on campus. The Sarah Isom Center for Women and Gender Studies are a partner with LMR in uh, just purposeful moments where we get to bring new and exciting endeavors to you like this week-long residency. I'm going to thank them later, but I'm going to thank them now too. Big shout out to Teresa Starkey, who's here, and Kevin Cozart. They are amazing individuals who are always up for the craziest, most creative ideas. Woohoo! <laughs> yeah! So, who are Kelly Hogan and Jenny Conley? There are many things I could say, but I'm going to stick to the script. Kelly Hogan is a singer-songwriter known for her work in Nico Case's band and for her solo work, which includes the album I Like to Keep Myself in Pain. The album features legendary keyboardist Booker T. Jones. She sings with the band The Flat Five and has released albums including 2020's Another World. Hold on, got more for you today. We also have Jenny Conley. Let me tell you a little bit, just a little bit. I could go so much deeper, this is just a morsel. <laughs> Jenny Conley is best known as the keyboard accordion player for the Decemberists who are celebrating their 20 year anniversary. In 2011, she appeared on Portlandia in comedic skits. She's also <laughs> appeared on Parks and Rec when the Decemberists performed at the Unity concert. Let's put our hands together and give a warm University of Mississippi welcome to these two amazing women. Ah, Woo! Thank I said, actually, you. I'm give you a little thank you. Oh, come down for me. I'll come to you. I'll yes. come to you. <laughs> welcome. All right. Dang, so, thanks. Thank you. You're welcome. You know, when this conversation started, it was, it was the brainchild of Teresa and Kevin. And of course, I was familiar with both of you and your, your work. Uh, but now getting to know you, it's just been such a gift. So I yeah. wanted to start off by saying thank you. You've made profound impact in this short span, both in the concert last oh, night man. and also with everyone you've engaged with. Oh, so thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much. We've had a, we've had a blast. Yes, we have. I mean, we've worked our, our tails off. And it's been good, yeah. but yeah, we, we've loved it. So thanks awesome. for having us. We can't believe we got to do this. Yeah. Well, I want to rewind the clock. I want to go way back, <laughs> not way back in time. They're so young. It's not way back in time. We're both celebrating 50th birthdays this year. Yes, it's true. You're in December, right? Yes. Nice I'm, I'm in about five days. Oh my goodness. So yeah. So we'll, yeah. We'll I have hope, to. I, I hope know. you do something fun. I hope so too. Or just really relaxing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. So I want to wind the clock back, not that far, but when did you start making music? Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> after you oh no oh, i insist after you. i started taking i guess i i guess i came home from seeing star wars and i played the theme on the piano uh, my mom when my mom put all of the sisters and i in piano lessons but i started in first grade and then i ended up getting my degree in piano performance i loved classical music and i also loved rock music so my second year in college, I joined a band, and I was really, I really struggled with that movement from reading music to like learning how to play without music, and then kind of struggled with that and learned over time. And then I've been in bands that since, still to this day, um, the Decemberists had now we're now at 22 years anniversary because oh my gosh. that tour was two years ago, would got canceled from COVID. So I know it's right. forever. Um, Time work. Mm -hmm. So yeah, my music's been journey has been you know like like this, kind of like Kelly's like octopus legs, as she would yeah. say, you know, because I'm I do like French accordion music. I'm a private teacher. Hi Rachel, um, <laughs> and um, doing lots of music projects. But the Decemberists are still my main gig, which is where I met Kelly because yep. Kelly was on tour with us singing 
harmony vocals, and so we became real good pals. Yeah. Well, I want to dive into that, but first, tell us how yes. what what was your first introduction into music? We were talking about this the other day. We were just like, how did you start singing? And I mean, my mom. Uh, I'm 56, so 1965, we had, people would have these hi-fi consoles, like yes. a coffin, you know, and the lid would lift up and you put the record in there. Had one in my home. And so I used to like pull myself up on it before I could walk and like rock, you know, with the records. Yeah. And then I, sometimes I would rock so hard the lid would slam on my fingers. Mm -hmm. And so pretty much when I was like two years old or something, I got a little record player that I could work. and. Uh, I got a stack of Buck Owens records, Monkees records, and Sesame Street records. And those are still my main influences <laughs> today. I loved it. And, um, and then I just would, I was super shy, so I would sing. Uh, my brother, we'd be in the car when I was little, and he'd go, you're singing it wrong. And I realized later, after I learned what harmony singing was, I was harmonizing to like the radio, like AM Top 40 hits back in 1969, 70. Mm -hmm. And then it was Girl Scouts. I loved, I still use skills that I learned in the Girl Scouts. Shout out to the Girl Scouts because <laughs> the first badge I got was the hobo badge, like, you know, which is like living on tour. So that's your skills. And then, the, <laughs> and the se you know, I can survive on a tour bus or in the woods. And then the second badge I got was the hostess badge. And we were, I'm like the, I'll, I'll cut, you know, oh. the, put the little cheese tray out. Every I day like, everybody our house is like beautiful little Hogan a surprise. Like this morning for breakfast, roasted okra, my yeah. first time ever. She's just got it all displayed out with a little bit of crystal salt on top. And you need to do a concert for the Girl Scouts. I know, I know. I I actually, I, I've, I've thought about that. And in my little town, I want to, uh, some people, like uh, some of the local kids that can't afford like the membership. Right. And I asked, I'm going to sponsor some kids this fall. So I'm going to get them in there. So yeah, and then it was Girl Scout camp. I went to Girl Scout camp and we're around the campfire. And they're like, who knows some songs? And I realized. I also had a propensity for remembering the lyrics of a bunch of songs, either goofy songs my granddad had sung to me, uh -huh. or they'd be like naming top 40 hits and rows and flows of angel hair. Hey, I know all the verses. And so I started leading the campfire camp out singing. And then they wanted me to sing at the ceremony when the parents came. Mm -hmm. And I, I was like, I can't sing in front of strangers. And so one day when I was in swimming class, they stole my clothes. And they said, we won't give you your clothes back. My, my <laughs> tent mates and the counselors were behind it. They stole my clothes. It was like, we're not giving your clothes back until you agree to sing in the ceremony. I walked around in a bathing suit for two days. No, you did not. Old. Yes, I did. I just was like in line at the cafeteria. I don't care. I'm not oh, caving. And then gosh. I finally caved. I needed my jean shorts back. And so I sang, I sang in front of the parents and all the brownies and Girl Scouts. And I sang um, uh, the, the uh, memories light the corners of my mind, wearing cutoffs and a t-shirt. This was 1976. It says, eat beans, America needs the gas. <laughs> and that was my first <laughs> nice. premiere. And I was barefooted because I remember <sighs> I looked out and people were looking down and I guess I was tapping like the beat with my bare foot. Oh my and gosh. that's how it all began. Then I, I had the confidence when I went back to school in the fall to audition for chorus and then look out. Well, and thank goodness they didn't give you your clothes back. I but, know. Uh, they but took I'm thinking my whole with this trunk. story, not only does there need to be an affiliation with Girl Scouts, <laughs> but they should name a cookie after Kelly. Oh, yeah. Lord. I'd buy the Hogan. Oh, Lord. Did you buy yep. the Hogan? <laughs> I'm in. It's going right. to be salty and sweet. Yes. It's going to be good. There's going to be some right. salt on there. So. so tell us about the first time y'all met. Because it had to be, I don't know, on that day that that happened, I think maybe the earth shook a little bit or something because <laughs> stars aligned. Well, there was a lot going on. I think we met at Conan, didn't yeah, we? Yeah, it was one of those things. Did we even have a rehearsal No. before that? No, no. We rehearsed at Soundcheck, I think, at Conan O'Brien's show. And because I had sung on the record like six months before, yeah. and then we ended up getting asked to come on the tour with my friend Nora. And, and did the, Nora come to that one? Yeah, like she my did. My brain is just yeah. like... I'll up. tell you what happened, Jenny. Tell me yeah. what happened. And then, so that was like December of 2014. Uh, and then, so we all met, because I had met, well, I met Colin, the lead singer, Colin Malloy, because he had been at the sessions. And I think that's it. I met the rest of the Decemberists uh, at Conan, like the day we were all supposed to perform together the first wow. time. And so the first time we performed together was on television. Was it, that was <laughs> yeah. in the big, was it in the big? The big room with the massage chairs. Yes, like yeah. the new Conan like location. Yeah, 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 the new one. Yeah. What and, are the massage chairs? You as soon as well, because I had done Conan before, and I was like, 
I call, I'll call, I call massage chair first. It's this cool little like lounge where you can all chill out and they have two massage chairs. It's like, all right, five minutes, that's it. And everybody's just like, Hey, like he has the in. best backstage of any of the late the night best. shows. Like yeah. he's got like, there's snacks, there's massage chairs, mm -hmm. there's makeup people to make it's very wow. It's very communal too. Like all the dressing rooms are around this main room where you can hang out. I was out. thinking, would students use massage chairs on campus? Would that, I don't know, you, just to pop in, chill for a little bit, yeah. and then move on? I think faculty would, I, I would. I don't know. Well, they have them I say the, these yeah. things and I get myself in trouble because then I've, I've not, you said right. we were getting massage chairs. Well, <laughs> I mean, they have them at airports, you know, and Why you not? put in your credit card. We could make money. Yes. All right, <laughs> yeah. wheels are turning, wheels are turning. Get it. Um, I'm curious, so what, <laughs> if you're willing, is there any little story about each other that you could share that, that um, uh, I don't know how to <laughs> well, pose this question. Um, <laughs> well, well, Kelly's an amazing cook on the tour bus. Okay. And oh, we got to talk about Galley Chef. Yeah, and I've, I started making a TV show called The Galley Chef. All right. And it started with our drummer, John. This was back before... I guess YouTube, because there was like a blog called The yeah. Galley Chef, and it was just had pictures. But then we took it up a notch and made it with... Um, like a cooking show. A cooking show, yeah. and usually it was like, see, they're super late or like early, like, and we're all half awake, and I'd be like, Kelly, what are you making in the galley? <laughs> and, <laughs> and she'd be like, because I'd be just be like, oh, my hair would be like this high, I'm yeah. wearing my hoodie and my pajamas, and are you okay with being on film? I was like, bring it on, let's cook. So, so what's, your best what's your best dish? Well, she makes a fantastic snack called yeah. the Louisiana crackers oh, yeah. that her mom, I don't know, it's, it's a southern classic and um, it's dirty people and you yeah. should tell them about Louisiana crackers because it was I think our most popular episode. Yeah oh yeah it was that was me sitting in the doorway of the bus yep. in my overalls mm -hmm. like making crackers in a jar on the asphalt it was like asphalt cooking. They're it's, like just yeah. to describe before you describe they're like homemade Doritos. Yeah. Ah, okay. <laughs> you use saltine crackers and some, you, then you make a, like a dressing with cooking oil and uh, a pack of ranch dressing powder and about a half pack of zesty Italian and then pepper flakes to your taste. My mom grows her own peppers and nice. her pepper flakes are like ka -chow! And so you put that in there, you shake it up, it looks like polluted water. You can put your crackers in a gallon jar or a gallon Ziploc, pour that oil all over it. And it seems like they would be greasy. Then you, then you tumble it. We say, like, tumble it gently every time you pass through the kitchen for, like, three days. But you have mm -hmm. to start trying them after a couple yeah. hours. And they magically suck all the oil up, and they're crispy. And they'll call your name at 3 in the morning when you're dead asleep, and you'll have to go in the kitchen and eat some. They're really great with pimento cheese on top. Sounds good. So Next time. If we've done nothing here today, people. <laughs> we've learned this. If we all Miss... You're welcome. Well, and yeah. I think this plays yeah. into, though, being in a band, right? Because you're on the road, spending all this time together. I'm sure you win over folks that you're traveling with, you know. Everybody sort of gets their own little role. And we talked a lot this week about, you know, part of getting hired is to be, uh, not be a butthead. Right. You know, be a decent person. Like, you want to give people their space, but you don't want to be like be a, a, good a dud, you know, mm -hmm. or some. So everybody kind of, they call me and Jenny JTM, like junior tour managers, because we're, we just, I don't know. Like, Trying to keep things going. Like the crew guys would always complain about that they didn't have good stuff on their bus. We and have I'm a like, well, bus for crew, yeah. I'll take care of you. So yeah. Like, like I get their stuff ordered because it was just them not having the time yeah. to do Cause, it. Yeah. His crew is just working. But thinking yeah. past yourself. Yeah. We, we, we probably got into some trouble. Like our bandmates sometimes would be like, just like like stay in your lane. Like right. stop um, yeah. trying to control things. Or I just like to have a good grasp on what's going on. I'd be like. So how is our luggage going to get there? Or how is the blah, blah, blah? They're like, Jenny, that's yeah. not your problem. I'm like, but it is kind of. I mean, <laughs> I know. I'm part of this. Well, if, you, if you've been burned I once understand. where your stuff hasn't been taken care of, then you're, you're just, you, I'd rather be labeled, you know, the JTM than yeah. show up and my stuff not be there. Or, or even just, like, we hate to, like, rolling, the, that rolling organism of the tour with, like, our bus and the crew bus, there's a p potential for a lot of waste. And so, like, I would just be conscious of, like, we have too many apples, so tomorrow get us a watermelon and we'll blow people's mind. You know, just flipping stuff over and so you don't want to waste things because that, you just see it, it, you can't help it. A right. lot of stuff just has to, even for health reasons, it's like, why can't we use real plates? It's like if one person gets sick and yeah. so there's a lot of waste. So that's all. Girl Scouts. Girl, Girl Scouts again. Yep. I don't know who yeah. do I didn't know that was going to be part of this today. I love it. Check it out. So if you could have a performance do-over, what performance would it be and why? Oh, gosh. 
Uh, you think, or you, okay, you, I can. I know. Well, there's so many things. I have one, it's actually in Chicago. We're playing a live on air for WXRT, and we were performing a piece of music that starts with the Hammond organ. I do a piece that I composed that before the whole thing starts. Mm -hmm. And um, we had a Is new. Hazards Prelude or something? Yeah, it was yeah. a Prelude mm -hmm. for Hazards, and it's just me. I walk out there, and I get on stage, and the organ's not working. And like nothing. I can do about it. And the organ's temperamental. It's from 1948. It's got, you know, it's an old lady. Um, it's like as big as a baby elephant. It's got a lot of... Yep. Yeah. And then I, thank God, had like a nice a synth patch that was already on my keyboard. I went right to that and I used a synthesizer for it. And, um, but I was sweat sweating, but it was, well, that was like, I don't want to put anyone under the bus, but we had a tech, <laughs> we had a tech that was like not familiar with the, right. with, with the instrument and Another thing is, well, I've got to go check it myself. Yeah, like, I yeah. have to go do you it You always myself. have to check your stuff yourself. Yeah, so no that, but what. I mean, that wasn't necessarily my problem, but and I thought I did do a good swerve there. Um, you didn't have to go, la, 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 la. <laughs> you right. just have to start <laughs> singing the prelude. Yes. Yeah. But I think that's something students don't think about a lot, the fact that there's so much, or even adults too, but so many moments where you just have to problem solve on the cuff. You just got to go with it. There's you got to, you always. can't get stuck in, this is what I was going to do. This is, you know, can't change from that. You've got to be flexible. No, we tried to teach our band that this week. You, yeah. Or even, you know, it, get that muscle memory, work with the equipment. Here's how you do this. Jenny's really savvy with gear. We had so. a moment last night when we went to the chorus and signed to deliver a little early. Yeah. But everyone went with it and didn't do yeah. the change and just was like, okay, we followed. Actually, Nick was singing, and you yep. followed him, and yeah, because he he went to the solo, yeah, and uh, and then and this we're so familiar that happened. That's normal. It's yeah. normal, and so I didn't know if anybody the students were freaking out, but then it also too if you're like take it, it gives you a little time to be like okay, now you can like semaphore like we're coming back regroup to the B part, you know, or we <laughs> gives us time to figure out how we're gonna. Yeah pull it all back together. Mm -hmm. That happens all the time, yep. all the time, so. So how about you, Kelly? If you had a, if you had a Maybe I would have worn shoes for the Girl Scout camp, for, I don't know, <laughs> yeah. Um, lots and st lots of stuff, some some stuff I won't, that I don't wanna talk about that involves, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, um, <laughs> the, the most recent one She's was. She's keeping it PG. The, yeah, the most recent one was uh, just uh, September 24th, my band, The Flat Five, was opening for Andrew Bird at Ravinia, which is like oh, the yeah. big outdoor fancy schmancy amphitheater in Chicago. And we have this one song where my character j is jumping, committing suicide by jumping off the St. Louis Arch. And there's this one note where it's like, uh, and if it was half step up or half step down, I wouldn't worry about it. But it's in this weird like oh, Peter Brady yeah. ring. Uh, and <laughs> it's happened to me and, and, it, and I get no warning when I'm holding the note. It just like, it's like skeet shooting. It's just, it just busts. And I, it's happened in practice before, but it's never the one time it, happened was a very high profile gig and so I'm, I forget what the lines are and then it was um, a dramatic choice yeah well it's and a then dramatic I saw choice like singing so like ah, 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 I went ha, 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 and somebody <laughs> in the audience went woo <laughs> <laughs> right sometimes but, people are like that was so real what an interesting that was so choice raw, what an right? interesting <laughs> choice but and then but then it threw <laughs> me off and it's a very like we're not making fun and it's a very tender verse but then I was kind of like ha, 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 like laughing in the lyrics and I could I started singing the first verse again it just threw me so I would like a do-over on that please <laughs> let's can I have a can I have a do-over please yeah <laughs> um so let's talk a little bit about the residency I'm curious um how has it been for y'all like if you were to put it in did it was it what you thought it was going to be was it different how would you describe because I'm amazed, let me just say, what they were able to accomplish with this group in this short span of time was mind-blowing. Well, we had and a bunch really. of badasses, man. I know, they were, but still. But yeah, they were green. Everybody was green. Everybody uh -huh. was very green as far as being in a band. But yeah. I didn't know what it was going to be like. I've never, Jenny's taught before. And yeah, she, but not in this, I mean, I've, I've only taught like private mm -hmm. students and I've never, like in college, I think I coached the jazz band like for a semester because my teacher was on tour or something, but that was totally different because they were, they'd been taking classes in that, doing that. Right. Yeah, I feel like, I don't think anyone in the group, actually that's not true, Nate and Taylor and, and I think Nick, Nick have all been in bands. Yep. And it was actually good for those, for those guys to be there to sort of be helpful in that way. And yeah, you know, we had a different, different levels of experience and so, yeah. yeah. Um, I thought, you know what it was, the production and all the equipment and all like the everything that was involved, like the housing that we're in, the facility here 
was all just so much nicer than I expected. This is such a more bigger and be more, I, mean, I haven't been to my campus, Oregon State, in a long time, but it is way bigger and more fancy and than just I expected. Wonderful facilities for yeah. the students, and then we were treated so well, and Yay. we're in our little Southern Gothic mansion, and our anonymous <laughs> donor, he, but he's <laughs> it's so nice, he's uh, loaned us his house for the week, and yeah, I didn't know what to expect, which was mo mostly my stress, is like, right. what is this gonna be? It's like the blind man and the elephant, I don't know. what. Living improvisation 24-7. Yeah, and, but you know, we've worked together, and we've been in close quarters together, uh, so we know we work well together. And yeah, this that was, was well, easy. But we didn't even know, like, our personalities were good together, and then yeah. our our skill sets were good. So we it was it was great, and there were there was a good call that you made about meeting the day before we were all going to meet. Like we had a Sunday rehearsal, that was so good to just get a, because then we realized we couldn't get through all the songs in each rehearsal because yeah. there just wasn't enough time. Right. And then we did have time because we had that place close to campus. We did, we did sectionals with the singers. Yeah. I, we had um, yeah, our well. well Lillian played four, three different instruments, and so we had her over to practice on one thing. It was like, we had so little time, so we couldn't focus on anyone in particular right. that much at rehearsal, because we were like, just get through this. Mm -hmm. And then we, and sometimes too much talking can make it, can make it hard. Like, yeah. when we're trying to work mm -hmm. out this song, Big Girl, which was our most complicated one, the time change was weird, and we were all thinking about it different ways, and like, Bryant was feeling it in, in time, and we were filling it in half time, and just how to communicate like we're counting bars wrong because right, well, and we're all counting bars in different ways. So then Taylor's like, I think it starts on the two, and we're like, that's a cool way to think about it. And so then I was we, like, oh no, there's a bar three in there, and all those answers are right. It's just a matter of how we talk about it. And I mean that mm -hmm. transfers to life in general, right? Yeah. And communicating, and, and just you know problem solving, and all those types of things. And that's the problem that'll happen your entire life in the in yep. in a band where everyone's got comes from different places, right? Musically, because that's just the reality of yep. it. The drummer comes well, from a different like place. Even like you said, Conan didn't even rehearse. You just came together. Yep. We rehearsed. Well, the sound check. And but you, you, you come prepared. Up. Yes. Everybody comes prepared. That's yes. super important. So yeah. yeah. But and yeah. Which is different. I think that that was a lesson that probably we learned and the students learned was that to get ready to do something like this, you do have to come knowing the songs really well. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's something that could be a lesson learned of like we. And I think maybe I could have known them better myself too. Like you just have to be. Able, and that's not looking at the chart. That is like list, just listening to the song. Mm -hmm. Just right. having them where where you're like, okay, this song. How does this go? Like that extra step, or like which song is this? You need to. In know any how genre, it goes. right? Yeah. When you're preparing a role in an opera. Mm -hmm. You need to. It's not. You just don't know your part. You're not coming right? to rehearsal. Yeah. What's the to French learn horn the doing, songs. right? Yeah, you're coming to rehearsal to put it mm -hmm. all together. 100%. So. So I think some of our folks learned that this week. And, and one of the scarier yeah. parts too is like, at least like in piano, I could st I could be nervous, but I still have my music up there. Mm -hmm. and I, or I had mem memorized and prepared the first bit, but here, like, I get on stage, and even like for that song, Gone, that we did for the introduction, mm -hmm. I'm like, you gotta be able to hear it in your head, you have no visual cues, mm -hmm. and so you gotta be able to like, think about it. It's a, I think it's a different muscle that you're I've using. Think one of the things I was excited for us to do this was the fact that the students were gonna get to hone listening skills in a different way and a different type of collaboration beyond that you know with the collaborative pianist it was just in a different form yeah because that's what i always stress like you got to listen you got to listen yeah. 90 percent listening 10 percent output is the best ratio for a band especially a singer too yeah. and you're just especially when you're backing singer you know you're either trying to be a murmuration you know where you're doing exactly the same thing or some ch songs you want to rub or be contrapuntal or whatever but yeah, listening and, and watching. As last night, I was like, "All right, yeah, watch everybody," because you listen. You'd be like, "Ah," and then all of a sudden, the band is stopped, and you're like, "Oops," <laughs> you know, or just you gotta be. And plus, it's more fun that way. You're right. You're, it's you know, the sum is greater, the total is greater than the sum of its parts. You're this thing. When we all stop at the same time, it's like, "Ah, oh, let's do it again." Like well, there was a great moment of that last night. Cool. There was a whoop. Oh yeah. So tight. We had a couple, so like there's the little thing and we can't have nice things and then the yep. Volpex song. It was great. Yeah, we had some dynamics. Like, that was the thing that you did really well was to like talk to them about doing the dynamic. Um, I was just more like, let's get through this and you're just like, no, we're going to get tight. We're going to break here and then you had us all work on that well, crescendo working and also in Joe too, like that crescendo that comes up and then. Or well, else it's just, yeah, like, and yeah. then also I'm very conscious, like I'm a lyric person and I think, I mean, the drummer needs to know the lyrics, just like the singer should know what the drums right. are doing. 
because you're, it helps how you deliver the song. To me, I don't want to get in the way of the song, like even though I want to go, eh, blah, 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 I just go, ah, <laughs> like I'm trying to, and then you receive the whole song, the right. lyrics, everything. So it's just. One the enhancing the other. Well, because I said like in the lyrics right now, this is, I'm, I'm saying, hey, fellas, turn it down. And if you guys aren't crescendoing behind me, it makes no sense for me to go, turn it down. And then it's, it's fun. And that just, that takes more time. We didn't have a lot of time. So right. I thought we did good with our time. Yeah. So well, let's do this. For our folks that were not here last night, I'm sorry, we'll share it later. We're going to share a little mini documentary about this experience that was put together by Jordan Presley. We're going to watch a little video. I see it. There's the red dot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. My name is Jenny Conley and I'm a pianist and an accordionist. My name is Hogan, Kelly Hogan. I'm from Atlanta, Georgia. I've been in bands since I was 17 years old. I started singing in jazz bands, wedding bands, and then I had a band in Atlanta. We've been very well taken care of by the Sarah Fest people, yeah. Teresa, Wink Wink, and Nancy, and, and, the, and the students have been great. We've been talking to them on the internet, and then now we're together, and we're getting our show together. We have one more practice. It's been cool. We did a Zoom audition, so we knew everybody on Zoom, and we had some Zoom meetings, and then we walked in the gym, and Zoom comes alive. And it was funny just seeing that the, you could see the, the kids excited and then they were like scared. It was like excitement <laughs> and fear. Yeah. I told Jenny too, my aim for this week is to learn as much or more from them as I am teaching them. Sarah Fest is the um, annual arts and music festival that's hosted by the Sarah Isom Center for Women and Gender Studies here at the University of Mississippi. The Department of Music and the Living Music Resource have a long established relationship with the Sarah Eisen Center. For many years now, we've been collaborating on Sarah Fest. So when we got together to start planning for this year, we decided to go bigger and bolder than ever. Over the summer, Teresa Starkey and Kevin Cozart, we met and we started brainstorming ideas and they tossed out the idea of Kelly Hogan. Our wheels started turning and we decided, what about a residency? Then we realized we needed to involve another person into this equation. So after talking with Kelly, she suggested Jenny Conley. And I am so happy to say that they were both on board for this residency idea. It's been pretty neat watching these students that I might have normally seen playing a clarinet, now, you know, playing a, a guitar. And students that normally just sing opera, suddenly singing backup vocals. It's also been really neat to have classes offered during this residency where Kelly and Jenny have just spoken on their areas of expertise. They, I mean, you guys are working so hard. Everybody has a thousand things that you guys are doing. And so here's a thousand and one. So they've been really working hard to, to raise this band up, inflate it like a rock and bouncy house. So it's been really thrilling and scary and very, very exciting. Yeah. When they asked me to come do this, I said, you know, I'm gonna need a translator. I'm gonna need an ally who went from the page to the stage, you know, yep. you're a classically trained pianist. And I'm just, I'm more of a seat of the pants musician. So, and then we're, it's nice to see you. We're That's good nice friends. So in the pandemic, we hadn't seen each other in a couple of years. So this all, thank you so much for coming with me. And then we're, we're here to mess up some young minds. <laughs> So first off, big applause to Jordan Presley for that awesome video. And we've added a new guest to our panel right now. What? We have Lillian Starrett. Did I just say it right? <laughs> yes. All right, good. And Lillian is one of the students selected who got to move from the page to the stage. So welcome, Lillian. 
Yay! Yay. <laughs> Good Good baby. The so I just want to know from you, what was what was this experience like, Lillian? Um, epic, I guess. I like that. <laughs> Hashtag epic. <laughs> yeah, uh, it was really cool. Like, like, I mean, yeah, it was just cool. Like, that's all I have to say. I mean, I have more to say, but. Let me you ask know. you. So when in the in the film, I said how there was this excitement and fear. Would that does that sum it up for you, or is that off base? You know, I thought I was going to be, like, nervous. I mean, I was, but and then especially last night, I was like, I wasn't nervous. Just so weird, because, like, I, I was in jazz band in high school, and like, I, I would go to practice, and I'd be like, oh, my gosh, what's up? I'm so scared. But I was like, it was fine. You know, I, I expected to be nervous, and then it didn't happen, and I was like, okay. Cool. You were focused like, I mean, you were like a ninja <laughs> last night and just like, <laughs> totally. And then there was a moment at the end, like the show ended with this big tune, that big girl song, and then it was ends with a guitar solo <laughs> and Lillian's like on the ground on her back, like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I had yeah. so much fun watching your peers and yeah. the faculty reacting to what they imagined Lillian to be and then just, I mean, yeah. a boss up yeah. there doing it. It was pretty cool to see. Yeah. It was amazing. Like your I solos said, were yeah. great, too. The yeah. solos were great. I always say, your solos make my cobra come out of my basket, <laughs> man. And then so she'd be playing, and I would be I like, I enjoyed the cobra. Ooh. So I, even your her audition blew us away, too. I really like your, she played us an original song, like Killer Hook, and couldn't get it out of my head for a couple of days. And I like how your original stuff I like the I like your ear. I, I call it the note less taken. You know what I mean? Like these cool choices and yeah. I immediately like I had my audition notes and it was just like yes. Like yeah. Well, I we did Zoom auditions before mm -hmm. this this residency took place and and I was there. My camera wasn't on, so I was sort of lurking in the background and I was I'll be honest multitasking a little yeah. bit. And then Lily and I was like, wait a minute. Yeah, man. What's going? What? Because and, then I'm, and then I'm surged, I'm looking you up. I'm like, I'm like, okay, tell me more about Lillian. And, and then I was so excited when she was picked. And I want to clarify the fear. It was more that seeing that prior to them coming to the audition and that correspondence, everybody last night, from my perspective as an audience member, just looked like they were in the zone. Good. They were in the zone good. and comfortable. Good. I mean, I like to be a little afraid. That's what, you yeah. know, when we, fear is a good motivator. It's a good, like, gives you that tigery feeling so anyway you so, rock and we're going to start our matt berry oh yeah, definitely. cover bands we're going to have our own little band <laughs> later on so i'm curious lillian how do you think and maybe you haven't thought this far about it yet but how do you think this is going to translate into maybe other music classes or ensembles or things you're involved in oh it was definitely great because um now i know more about like actual like setup and stuff and like actually playing live because you know I've I've played with my friends and stuff in a garage, and that's a lot different. I mean, we have microphones and amps, but eh, you know, it's not the same. Which, um, like playing live stuff like that, that's always what I've wanted to do, and I've never really done it. So then I did, and I was like, oh, okay, cool, nice to know what's actually up with it. A nice intro. Yeah, that's yeah, it. Great. So if you two were to give Lillian or any of these students sort of, if you were to pick one piece of advice whether they participate in this experience or they watched it or they're going to later hear about it. What would you tell to a rising musician? Start a band. Start three bands. Don't start a band to make money or to make it. That's, that's your ticket to depression. Like, mm -hmm. you just want to make music because you can't not make music. And I was telling you guys, it was great to hear everybody after the show was like, hey, would you come play? Like, start a band. Like, I want, I want to, it's like Miracle Grow. I want all these little bands to start up because there's no other way you're going to learn how to do it or work with equipment. And then just like since I started singing in bars when I was 17, I've been in like two or three or now like five bands at any given time, like a country band or I'll go do this or and you just because you want to you want all the music. You want to eat the whole buffet <laughs> and then just it does take muscle memory and experience and play in super crappy gigs and then super great gigs and you make great friends. And we were talking last night, Bryant Stubbs Jr., our drummer is more like gospel soul background drummer, but you were like, would you want to come play with my friend and me? And, and it's really like when I form a band, like we might have a jazz drummer come sit in with the country band and it really informs and makes it a little different. And so start a band right All now. All right, start a band. Get what used to ramen noodles and <laughs> thrift store furniture. 
What about you, Jenny? Oh, what I, you say? I really like that. Um, I feel like, because one of our ideas was like, okay, what if these people were going to be in our band, like that we were going to audition people to be in our band, and this is how we we're going to communicate with them of how what we expect. I think a lesson would be like to be, oh, like be, be over prepared mm -hmm. for your first rehearsal yeah. is a good I think just to let people know that that's what you need to be to keep yeah. your job. Yeah. Yeah. And then I think this is another good point, Lillian, is like the gear part, like knowing your gear. And that was like something that we got to at the end of the um, the week is like let's everyone plug in and tune and be ready to go um, before. Yeah. Because it just you know it's just you try to be efficient. I mean you want to have rehearsal be fun too. Mm -hmm. But it always it felt tight. Like if that was like a regular rehearsal, we'd probably be we'd probably do three hours. We'd probably dwarf yeah. around a little bit more. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we my band practices for like five or six hours sometimes, mm -hmm. and we have these complicated arrangements, but then it's like, whoa, it's over already? Like, we right. just are like, have such a good time. Band practice is where it's at. But I like those pieces of advice because preparation is key, right? You only get one time to make that first impression, yep. and you want to come in, and, and the more prepared you are, the more you can listen, and the more the nerves subside. Yeah. And then you're speaking to my heart, Kelly, on the whole, you know, being in different types of groups, because I process that to me, and I think Good music is good music, mm -hmm. and we all need to be exposed as much as possible mm -hmm. to all different genres and learn and even steal yeah, or, or adopt well, and bring it in, right? You know, I work with uh, this artist, Linda Berry, and even she talks about with drawing, you don't, you don't make up your own alphabet. You learn by copying the alphabet, or you copy things and you go from there. Right. There's nothing wrong with that, or you learn a cover song. Or, mm -hmm. yeah, and I, we were talking last night about you know, getting started. I was like in these bands, and then I just I went to see music all the time too just and see stuff you don't think you're gonna like or you know punk rock shows jazz shows country shows me and my friend pretended to be chorus teachers and snuck into this convention in atlanta one time <laughs> to see the sea island singers you know and just we just were interested in all of it we made a name tag like podunk middle school you know but anyway i digress <laughs> but yeah just see see music just do music and mm -hmm. get out of your comfort zone and do something you don't know how to do Got it. So, I have one last question for you, Lillian. If you're willing to answer, what, I what did you learn about yourself? Is there anything that you learned about yourself that you didn't know? Um, hmm. Well, I guess to just, I don't, I don't know if this is the right that you answer. Are There's awesome. no wrong answer. That you are awesome. <laughs> There's no wrong answer. Um, I think I learned to not care. Like, look, that sounds like. No, 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 like, no, 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 no. Because, like I said earlier, like I was talking about, I was in jazz band, and I always felt like scared, like I was gonna do bad. Um, Clamophobia. Like right? Clamophobia. Yeah. And it's like, terrible. I also kept comparing myself because there was an another guitar player. He goes here. He's cool. Um, uh, but <laughs> <laughs> but <Disclaimer>. he was. <laughs> he, oh, I always thought he was like so much better than me, and I was like, man, I suck. But then you have to learn. I think I learned you have to. It's okay. You know, you gotta. Everybody's g freaking good at something. If you're good at something, be like, heck yeah, and then learn what you're good at. Yeah. That, you could be good at things in different ways, and it helps. That's what I mean. Things. I think you're an amazing guitar player. It's a totally different if we're talking about the same person. Yeah. But uh, yeah, you know, oh, no. okay, another no, another person. Okay, but yeah, it's a different. Like <laughs> I like your flavor. I mean, as soon as I saw your audition, I was like, ooh, be in my yeah. band, be weird with me. So, and I mean that in a nice way. I know, like, don't care, like. <laughs> Yeah. When it went, just go ahead and don't be afraid to fail. You're never yeah. going to learn But that's from key, it. because the thing so. is, you can't listen. Whether you're making music or you're corresponding, communicating with someone, if you are pent up, stressed, anxiety-ridden, nervous, whatever, you can't hear and process. Yeah. So I love that you said, don't care. It's not yep. that when you care about the music, you come prepared, but then mm -hmm. it's like, let's just do this. Then you just do it. And that's it. something else you guys did a great job with. I have to say, and I think I mentioned this to one of you on the side, it's sometimes hard for the students when they're working with their professors. They feel like they're, they're sub or below, and there was this vibe the whole week of equal, mm -hmm. right? Good. And then it's collaborative music making as mm -hmm. opposed to, am I right? Am I right? Yeah. You know. Well, we, you know, there's the famous saying, play a wrong note once, it's a clam. Play it twice, it's jazz. So mm -hmm. <laughs> pass, that, pass that on. Yeah. So. Well, thank you, Lillian. Thank Yay. you. Yay. Thank We're you gonna, so much. We're gonna, you can sit still there for a sec. We're going to shift to a game. We uh -oh. always play a game on LMR Live. And this game is super fitting. We are doing Hogan's 
slogans. A little intro, and then we'll play. All right. I can't wait for this. <laughs> oh, geez. <laughs> And this is a whispering edition. So what's happening in a moment? I didn't push play yet. Okay. I'm going to push play that Kelly is going to be hearing some music, so hopefully she can't hear us. We'll have to test. We'll have to go on the honor system here. And then I am going to say a saying that is a very Kelly Hoganism-like saying and see if she can read my lips. So you have to speak up, Kelly, when you're trying to read my lips, okay. yes? Yes. And then we're going to give Jenny a chance at this. She will put these fantastic kitty cat headphones on to also play the same game. So let's sound check first. Tell okay. me if this is too loud or if I need to go up or down. Can you hear me? Are you talking now? I oh. am. Can you hear me? No. Nope. Okay, great. Too, la too loud? Okay. All right. So the first one. <laughs> Rabies for music. Rabies for music. Woo, yeah. Yeah. Give me Google Ha ha. Right. All right. <laughs> I love how she says rabies for music. Well, we can explain a little bit later. Okay, I'm gonna try it. I'm gonna do that. Okay. Thousand thumbs up. Is that, is that the Mitch Hedberg joke? A thousand of something? Thousand thumbs up. <laughs> thousand thumbs up. Thousand thumping, I don't know <laughs> what you're saying. Like, thousand. I'm terrible at this. Thumbs up. Thumbs up? <laughs> yes. Thumbs thousand up. Thousand thumbs up. Thumbs because up. She said last night, I wish it was a centipede so I could give you a thousand thumbs up. Okay. <laughs> One more. Swiss Army knife. <laughs> what? Just take a guess. What? <laughs> <laughs> Swiss Army knife. Something about my life? OK. Swiss Army knife. I don't know. Dogs are my life. Uh, <laughs> one more time. Wine is my life. Swiss oh. Army knife. One more time. <laughs> Swiss Army knife. <laughs> I don't know. Take All a right. walk. Music is my life? I don't know. Oh, that would have been a good. Swiss Army knife. Oh, Swiss Army knife. Swiss oh, sorry, Army I'm still yelling. Swiss Army knife. <laughs> sorry, this is loud. Knife. So explain to them what you Ooh. mean by Swiss Army knife as Jenny puts the headphones on. OK, oh. yeah, it, those are fun. Okay. I want to get some. Um, there. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Um, just kind of what we talked about in our, I'm still talking really loud. <laughs> I always do. <laughs> sorry. Um, that was fun. I, I was terrible at that in school. No, you weren't. The first one you got right okay. away. I gave you too much lip, though. That's why I suddenly got a little more like, right. okay, I'm not going to on my lip. No, I was like in class. Nobody could s secretly message me, what are you saying about the teacher's butt? Yeah, so <laughs> anyway, so Swiss Army knife is what we talked about in our first class. Like, that's how, and it goes back to all different kinds of music. You want to have as many skills as you can have, like Jenny with the gear prowess and playing prowess organization like like I booked the bands like it, just in every little level of the peanut buster parfait if you have well that would have been a good one peanut buster parfait. <laughs> if you have knowledge of all that stuff and like um, you know I was talking to Miranda in our class and she's got this beautiful voice for opera and you know I was encouraging I said what do you listen to in the car she's like I listen to rap music and I was like oh you sing along she's like no and I was like <laughs> sing along come on <laughs> Uh, wouldn't you love to hear Miranda I would sing love, some rap I, I, music? This is not what I thought you were going to say. No, was rap she's music. like, I find it's very good driving music. So, so I was just trying to like <laughs> sing loud. You know, you she has a way of saying things. Like yeah, the delivery, it's hilarious. It's so great. So, just as many skills as you can have, then the more you'll get hired. 
Got to it. do all these different sorts of things. My, my friend Linda Berry, her husband calls him his Swiss Army wife because she can do a bunch of different things. So I, like I kind of took Army that from wife. her. So. But yeah, just have, just rack up skills. Or yeah. like I always say too, like get as many colors of crayons. You can make more things or, yeah. Very cool, very cool. Be all versatile. Right. Let's try it, Jenny. Good luck, man. Good luck, man. <laughs> can you hear me? Okay. Um, here we go. Balls in the air. Um. Do it again. <laughs> Balls in the air. Birthday? No, <laughs> no, no. Balls in the air. I'm gonna be, I'm bad at this too. Um. Balls in the air. It just looks like birth, birth deer to me. Birth deer. <laughs> One more time. One more time. Balls. Oh. Balls in the air. Balls in the air? Yes! Okay. Yeah. Yay. All right, let's see about this next one. Now these are all Kelly Hogan slogans. We're getting that, right? Gosh. Okay. Let's go, Stinko. Let's go to town? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> let's go to town. It's actually let's get Stinko. Oh, yeah. sorry. No, it's this okay. one was sent in by one of the kids. Oh. Okay. Let's get Stinko. Is the first word let's? Okay. Let's get Stinko. Let's get this going. Nope. Close, close, close. Let's get Stinko. Oh, see, now the music got. Um, oh, no. Let's get Stinko. Let's get Stinko. All right. Yeah. So it's not let's go Stinko. No. Let's get Stinko. No, it's not. I'm not calling anybody Stinko. Okay. It's, it means let's go get drunk in 1930s parlance. <laughs> so it's the name of my publishing company. Let's get Stinko. It's from Miller's Crossing. It's from a movie. I love so, it. Yeah. All right. Here we go. You're fired. Do it again. I got some dancing music. Okay. Okay. You're fired. Too fast. Nope. Okay. <laughs> You're fired. So, uh, feather. I uh, know. You're fired. <laughs> I just can't do it. <laughs> You're fired. Oh, you're fired. You're yeah. fired. You're fired. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. One more with you, One Jenny. more. Okay. <laughs> okay. Ruin some kids. Um, feel the beat? <laughs> <laughs> That's what you do to do this. Yeah. Okay. Ruin some kids. Oh, man. I can't tell. I can't tell. Just take a guess. <laughs> Ruin some kids. Where I... P something, a piece of something, a piece, this is a, ruin, you're a piece of the whole, no. Ruin some kids. Something about the beat, that's all I got. I have nothing else. <laughs> Here, take off, take it's, all, okay. it's all ruin about the beat. Kids. Ruin some so, kids. Oh, ruin some kids. Yeah. So tell us what this means. <laughs> what does this mean, ruin some kids? We just kind of, like we said, we're going to, and I'm, you know, you know how, I, they all know how I talk after a week. I mean, it's just so crazy, uh, but yeah, we're just going to mess up some kids, like shake them up a little bit. And well, I felt like you were maybe thinking that we were going to come down. I was thinking too, you might get like some like more like classical musicians you hadn't even, not that that's like, like we're ruining, but like maybe like be like, actually there's this other thing and maybe. Right, yeah. Well, yeah. one of our, Taylor, our guitar player, who's a mechanical engineer student, and I was like, I'll give your mom a note. If you, if Taylor changes his major to music, he will be constantly in play. He will. He's just, he's a musician. Well, he's the one so. that submitted this line, and he said, because telling them they should live on thrift store couches and ramen noodles <laughs> to play music. Well, <laughs> you have to be, you have to your, get your priorities in order. Yeah. So, and you have to decide what you can live with. And I don't want a bunch of stuff. I want to play music. Mm -hmm. And so that's So did I you do. write to the students and have them? So I've been taking notes all week. Yeah. I mean, oh I, my have, gosh. I have so many pearls of wisdom. Like in the class, I just kept writing down these little one-liners, these little lines, and then I asked them to which one spoke to you, and then we picked the top oh. ones. And I have one more. Okay. I have one more. This was from last night. I want to do it with you, Kelly. You got to put this head okay. back on. Oh, okay. One more. You should explain your fire. This one is Maybe that perplexing. came from Bryant. Yeah, 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 where did, who, oh, we'll, we'll do that after. Okay. Okay. Hold on. Say something. Can you hear me? Okay. Flesh casserole of pizza. <laughs> what? Is this about the flesh casserole? How is she? Yeah. <laughs> casserole Can you hear me? Easy to like do. Yeah. Flesh casser casserole of pizza. Oh. <laughs> flesh casserole of pizza? 
Yes. Yeah. Oh, that's so weird. Easy. All right. Like, all right. That's that was two stories in one. Yeah, that was like when I saw Dr. Dog. Well, and my friend JT in Atlanta coined that term flesh casserole. Like mm -hmm. that's what you want at your show, a flesh casserole, wall to wall, people. And I remember during the pandemic, I'm like, I'm never gonna have a flesh casserole again <laughs> because nobody's gonna want to right, get right. all together. But then it was the Dr. Dog show where they bought pizza for the audience at uh, at First Avenue because they're awesome in so many That'd ways. That'd be pretty amazing to be at it a concert was, and we were up in the VIP watching them, and then we saw they just started passing like 400 pizzas out to this sold out that's flesh amazing. casserole at First Avenue in Minneapolis, and we were just like, Oh yeah, that's the way to do it. So. <laughs> It was great. Well, I want to plant a seed with you guys. I don't think this should be a one-hit wonder. I think we need to have you come back. Oh, we'd love that. We um, would love it. I want it to do it again. It would be amazing. Let's do it amazing. again. And if anyone's looking for folks to have in to do a residency, this is your duo because you guys really, truly balance each other out wonderfully, bring incredible different aspects to the table, and it's been really neat to watch it unfold. I wish I could have been present for every second, oh, man. but I've enjoyed everything I've watched, so thank you. We've had oh, a blast. A blast. Yes. Thanks Yay. for having us. Yay. Well, I want to thank some people for making this possible. I want to thank all of our LMR supporters and partners, our loyal viewers via the web, the College of Liberal Arts, the Department of Music, and very importantly, UM's Sarah Eisen Center for Women and Gender Studies, Teresa Starkey, Kevin Kozart, Jamie Harker. Y'all are incredible. Let's give them a round of applause. Yay! I won't let all of the cats out of the bag here, but we have some exciting academic initiatives coming down the pike between the Department of Music and Sarah Eisen Center, so be on the lookout for that too. I want to thank our giving group, Secret Salon Society. If you're interested in supporting the efforts and initiatives of LMR, we would be happy to have you join our society, reaching out to Brady Bramlett to join. Uh, other people to thank, I just mentioned his name, our Executive Managing Director, Brady Bramlett. I want to thank Graduate Assistant Miranda Shapiro, Undergraduate Assistants Alexis Rose and Emma Johnson. Also a very special thank you to Charlie Miles and Jordan Presley. Um, I hope y'all are going to join us back in the near future. In just a mere few days, we're going to be doing another LMR Live with Tony Award-winning composer Adam Gettle, who will be joining us here for a residency. And on November 3rd, 7.30, we'll be doing an LMR Live. Finally, I want to thank these two exquisite humans sitting <laughs> on the couch. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for shaking things up in a beautiful way. And we've all learned so much, haven't we? We really, truly have. So all thank right. you. Give it thank up you for them. having us. Thank and you for having remember, us. The music research revolution continues. Till next time.